Hello isopod fans, this is Wally Kern from Supreme Isopods and I get a lot of questions about how I set up isopod substrates, how I set up a new enclosure for new isopods and what I do about the substrate. Well I'm going to show you today how I set up isopod substrates and as a bonus I'm going to show off two isopods that I recently got and I tell you what, these are cool. Don't try to read those names because it's a surprise and I'll show you those isopods a little bit later in the video. So stick around and let's take a look at that substrate. The isopod vlog. Hey, are you trying to take a peek at those names of those two isopods? Well, let me take those out right now and we'll focus on the substrate first. Hey iSpot Keepers, let me first ask you to go down and subscribe, hit the notification all, and like this video if you like the content that we're producing. Let's talk about this uh, substrate. Make sure that you're using country crock butter calcium added. Make sure you're adding that butter with calcium. I'm just kidding. The tub on the right actually has a Zilla Jungle Mix, which I just love for these enclosures. The tub on the left has an orchid bark without fertilizers. That's so important. Don't use orchid bark with fertilizers. And I like the orchid bark because it adds some spacing in between the soil, the substrate, and little pockets, and it really helps that substrate. The jungle mix on the right, I like this because it adds a lot of air to the mixture instead of it being just the, the dirt substrate itself. And as you notice, we're working our way backwards. Next, let's talk about this wood pellets. I love the wood pellets because it adds age to the substrate. It makes it last a lot longer. On the right is a calcium. Any kind of a human consumption calcium will work in the substrate. That light brown line on top is a garden lime. I like to add about a tablespoon or two of that to the substrate simply to take away the acidity of the substrate long term as it builds up because we're using so many natural ingredients to the substrate. So we have the pellets, the calcium, the lime on top, and now we're going to talk about the substrate itself. For the substrate, I like to use worm castings. You can use dirt, but I feel like the worm castings adds a lot of natural ingredients to this whole substrate. I've been using the worm castings for about a year, year and a half, and it just seems to work perfect for this isopod substrate. Now I know the next question you're asking is how much of each ingredient. So I use about a cup of the wood pellets, about two tablespoons of the calcium, about a tablespoon and a half of the lime. I add in about a half of a cup of the orchid bark and about a half a cup of the Zilla jungle mix, just to add substance to this enclosure, this isopod substrate. And I'm using a 15 quart enclosure and you'll find a little bit later in the video that I probably overmix this and we'll adjust that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and throw in that jungle mix. Let's add the orchid bark. And what we're going to do now is just stir this whole mixture up. I'll go ahead and speed this whole process up so you don't have to sit here and watch me stir this mix up. All the ingredient measurements that I just gave are just estimates. I do this different every single isopod enclosure that I set up. But lately I've been using this mix and I hope that this helps you get to start on your enclosures as well. At this point I'm realizing I have too much mix in this enclosure because it actually goes up to the ventilation holes and I don't really want that. So I'm going to take out a couple of cups of the substrate mixture that I already have and I'll use that in my second setup that I'm going to do. The leaves that I'm adding at this point aren't the leaves that are going to be on top of the substrate. These are actually leaves that I'll mix into the substrate to again help that substrate hold on a better, longer lifespan for these isopods. Speeding this up once again, you can notice that I'm taking away the stems of these leaves and that's because if the stems do extend onto the lid of the enclosure and you put the lid on, isopods could crawl out. This is perhaps an unnecessary step, but at least it makes me feel better that all of these stems aren't in this mix when I mix everything up together and it's only leaves. I think we're all set with the leaves. I'm going to go ahead and take the leaves and crumble them up so that they mix in a little bit better with the substrate. 
And again, we're doing this step, mixing the leaves with the substrate to make that substrate last even longer for these isopods. This is a really, really important point. Adding those leaves, adding the wood pellets really extends the life of your isopod substrate. If you don't add those, your isopod substrate will probably last about four months or so. Adding these will extend that life to about six to eight to 10 to 12 months. At this point, we're going to go ahead and add sphagnum moss for the moist area, and that will help the isopods have an area where they can go to to hydrate. We're going to talk more about that moist area and dry area and the gradient in between a little bit later in the video, but right now I'm adding water especially to that sphagnum moss, especially to the moist side. Really, really understand the specific requirements of your isopods so you know how much moisture you need to add to the enclosure. For these isopods that I'm adding, for this one specifically, they like a little bit of moisture, but especially a real nice moist area. Two more steps and this enclosure is going to be ready for those isopods. And I think you know this next step. We're going to add some leaves here and I like these really, really dry leaves. These are ready for the isopods to start eating immediately and that's so important in their diet. I'm going to go ahead and take off the stems to some of these leaves and we'll be all set for the last step and that's adding the wood. This is a really important piece of wood right here because it, because it has that concaved look to it. The isopods can get up off the substrate and they can use this wood to transfer from the moist area all the way to the dry area. And they'll choose if they want to be moist or dry and have the ability to go in between those two spots whenever they want to. So now we have a really nice place for them to go in between the two different areas. Let's put some decaying wood in here. This is really important too. Isopods will eat that decaying wood. And we're going to put in a half coconut shell simply because it looks really cool. I think it looks really cool. What do you think? Leave a comment down below on if you think this looks like a cool isopod enclosure. As well, if I missed anything or if you have any questions, leave that comment down below. Let's take a look at those isopods. It's about time, isn't it? And this is really something special. Let me ask you this. If you've never heard the name of an animal, do you have a problem saying the name of that animal? Well, I'm going to give this a shot. This is Murillanella Vietnam. Murillanella. I hope that's right. I think it is. But anyways, this is Vietnam. It's not the pandas, and the pandas are gorgeous. It's not the tricolor, and the tricolors are gorgeous. This is Vietnam, Marulanella, Vietnam. These animals were purchased from Brittany from the isopod chick, and I'm so excited to work with them. I will tell you one thing. These animals, these isopods are super quick. We're probably not going to get a very good shot of these. This might be our best shot of this isopod. They are just unbelievably fast, and I just could not get a really, really good shot of these isopods. Now, Brittany indicated that they're set up like a normal isopod, some uh, moist area, some dry area. So we're going to give this a shot and see what we get with these uh, Murillanella. That was probably our best shot of this isopod. They're just so quick. They like to burrow. They like to hide. We're just not going to see these. At this point, we're ready to add that cup into the new enclosure. And you might be asking, why am I not selectively pulling those isopods out to put in this new enclosure? Instead of dumping the whole contents of the cup into there, well, my point is I know these breeders that I'm buying these isopods from, and I know that they're doing a great job with their isopods. And I don't worry about adding their substrate to my substrate. Well, there was a pretty good look at this Murillanella Vietnam. That's probably the best look that we're going to get. Let's take a look at these second ice pods that I got from Brittany. And this is Armadillidium maculatum zebras. And you might be saying, well, you already have zebras. Why are you buying more? Well, I'm buying more because these are the yellow stripes instead of the white stripes. And that yellow just absolutely glows, I feel. That yellow stripe on the Armadillidium maculatum zebra really shows out on these yellow stripes. 
I've wanted this color variation of the zebra for a long, long time, and I feel very fortunate enough to be able to work with this variant now in my collection. They're just an absolutely beautiful icebox. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer view of these and see if we can focus in on them. They're not easy to focus in, but we'll give it a shot. There's a really good shot of these zebras, and you can see how vibrant that yellow stripe really is. Beautiful, beautiful animal. Very happy to have these in, in the collection. I'm going to keep them exactly the same way that I keep the other zebras. A little bit drier, but absolutely have a moist area for these Armadillidium maculatum zebra yellow stripe. Let's enjoy the beauty of these isopods. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I hope it helped everybody to set up their isopod enclosures in a better manner. This is what works for me. If you do something different and it works for you, absolutely do that because I'm hoping everybody has success with their isopods. Hey, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and hit that notification all so you don't miss a one of, another one of these videos. Thanks again for watching and leave comments and questions down below. Thanks again.